All right, let's get started. Jasper Jones, written by Craig Sylvie, a coming of age slash buildings roman disguised as a murder mystery set within the backdrop of the fictional Australian town of Corrigan during 965 to 966. This is Charlie Buckton, 13 intellectual narrative novel, just your average young boy. He's quite descriptive as he wants to be a writer akin to famed writers Mark Twain and Harper Lee. You see, Charlie admires them so highly to where his philosophical and fundamental morality and his overall principles is based upon these texts he's read from these acclaimed authors. However, there are multiple instances that Craig Sylvie has written Charlie to have multiple examples of control and uncontrol, and he has to often accept the inevitable realities of life itself. This often clashes with his own beliefs, and he has to make what he considers to be the best choice. Even from the get-go on page one, Craig Sylvie, as if racing down Mount Panorama itself, accelerates Charlie into circumstances that he can and cannot control through the first instance of the titular character, Jasper Jones. Sylvie has written for the story to have no input, no sense of choice for Charlie on the arrival of Jasper Jones at his window, nor the death of Laura Wishart. At the start, Sylvie musters the reverence that Jasper Jones holds on many with a simple sentence. The thrill of this, coupled with the fact Jasper Jones needs my help. With moments like these, the short sentence length demonstrates that Charlie is savouring the moment of being wanted by the cool kid. In much of his internal dialogue, Charlie is shown to be jumpy, having short lines of thinking. There's a certain rhythm to Sylvie's writing that allows for these stretches of short and long sentences with a break to signify importance of an upcoming story beat, such as when the commotion between Sue Finley and Charlie's friends Jeffrey's Vietnamese mother. With these jumpy sentences, he exhibits that he's not in control of the situation himself. Compared to afterwards, Charlie makes up his own mind and questions Jasper's request on bringing him to see Laura with the sentence, But what? What are we going to do? We're not detectives. This is serious. Fuck you. I'm going. Sylvie captures the eternal panic through these short sentences that stab ideas out. With such horrifying moments, the author has taken delicate care with his use of language to shape Charlie moving forth into the novel, maturing the young man. He has taken Charlie out from the imaginary world of the literary novels into the grounded reality of Corrigan, forcing him to respond to crises not of his own making. However, Sylvie wrote Charlie to have his first real grasp of control through the combined effort of the character Jasper Jones. After discovering the murder of Laura, Charlie and Jasper come to the executive decision to hide the body until further notice. This action, although morally ambiguous, is a demonstration of Charlie's agency with the ability to make difficult choices. With Charlie's struggle with this choice, he still makes the grand effort. I feel as if Craig Sylvie made this choice to really set up our protagonist to make more meaningful or adult-like decisions later on in the novel. Yet while his next choice is something not as traumatizing as grooving a corpse, it can be defined as an age transitional choice that being drinking and smoking. The inner monologue from Charlie is much more calmer as he's trying to refocus away from the current decision and focus on something much more different. It's an exploration of the character's own autonomy and a relatable one for many. As us young people decide we want life altering illnesses, social reasons, similar to Charlie. You know another ship? Here comes the airplane! Mm. You're way too comfortable with doing that. Young Charlie has parents both being varied between each other. However, it is the dynamic between him and his mother that causes Charlie much friction in the novel, further elucidating his journey between control and helplessness. While he can control his responses to his mother's harshness, he can't control the punishments given to him. One example is the punishment where his mother makes him dig up a hole and fill it in. However, in a brilliant piece of foreshadowing and double meaning, she says, I mean, fill this hole back up with that dirt, Charlie. So while in the literal sense she wants Charlie to fill in the hole in the backyard, Sylvie wrote this to indicate hidden feelings that are later revealed in the novel. The sentence provides a double meaning that can be interpreted as if you have something missing in your life, fill it in with something negative, because at least the hole is gone. This dynamic captures the frustration of adolescence where a young person begins to assert independence yet remains under parental authority. You know, being through Charlie's eyes brings a sort of feeling you can't really describe, but it's the moment you realise you're growing up. Towards the end of the novel, in the final chapters, we see our main character be fully realised. Charlie Buckton, 13, intellectual, narrator of the novel, becoming a man. As much of our existence we can control, there is so much we just can't control. A lot of issues that happen to Charlie regarding his family and friends can be found to be so endearing, you just can't help but reflect on what could have or couldn't have happened in our lives. Craig Sylvie created this vessel as an entry into fitting certain parts of Charlie that can only be experienced during such small windows of our existence. 
In the parts we can't really relate to, the author creates the opportunity to look within one's own moral boundaries and where people can choose to grow and really look back. If there is anything else to really say about this coming of age story, it's about life. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe next time we'll get paid. I already pay you enough money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. How does more exposure sound? For free? For free! I'm quivering.